The Book of Job. From the original Hebrew on the basis of the common and earlier English versions. Entered according to Act of Congress, in the year 1856, by the American Bible Union, in the clerk's office of the District Court of the Southern District of New York. The Book of Job. Chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. This man was perfect and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. His substance was seven thousand sheep and goats, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred shiasses, and very many servants. And this man was great, above all the sons of the east. Now his sons went and held a feast, at the house of each, on his day, and they sent, and invited their three sisters, to eat and to drink with them. And when they had let the feast days go round, Job sent and purified them. And he rose early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all, for Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and have forsaken God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now it was the day, when the sons of God came to present themselves before Jehovah, and Satan also came among them. And Jehovah said to Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered Jehovah and said, From roaming over the earth, and from walking about upon it. And Jehovah said to Satan, Hast thou observed my servant Job, that there is none like to him on the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and shunneth evil? And Satan answered Jehovah and said, For naught doth Job fear God. Hast not thou hedged him about, and his house, and all that he hath, on every side? The work of his hands thou hast blessed, and his substance is spread abroad in the earth. But, put forth now thy hand and touch all that he hath, if he will not renounce thee, to thy face. And Jehovah said to Satan, Lo, all that he hath is in thy power, only, against himself do not put forth thy hand. And Satan went out from the presence of Jehovah. Now it was the day, that his sons and his daughters were eating, and drinking wine, in the house of their brother, the firstborn. And there came a messenger to Job, and said, The cattle were ploughing, and the shiasses were grazing, beside them, and Sabaeans fell upon and took them, and the servants they have smitten with the edge of the sword, and only I alone escaped to tell thee. Whilst he was still speaking, there came another, and said, The fire of God fell from heaven, and burned the flocks and the servants, and consumed them, and only I alone escaped to tell thee. Whilst he was still speaking, there came another, and said, Chaldeans form three bands, and set upon the camels and took them, and the servants they have smitten with the edge of the sword, and only I alone escaped to tell thee. Whilst he was still speaking, there came another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating, and drinking wine, in the house of their brother, the firstborn. And lo, there came a great wind from beyond the wilderness, and struck upon the four corners of the house, so that it fell on the young men, and they died, and only I alone escaped to tell thee. Then Job arose, and rent his garment, and shaved his head, and he fell to the earth, and worshipped. And he said, Naked came I forth from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Jehovah gave, and Jehovah hath taken away, blessed be the name of Jehovah. In all this Job sinned not, nor uttered folly against God. Chapter 2. Now it was the day, when the sons of God came to present themselves before Jehovah, and Satan also came among them, to present himself before Jehovah. Then said Jehovah to Satan, From whence comest thou? Satan answered Jehovah and said, From roaming over the earth, and from walking about upon it. Then Jehovah said to Satan, Hast thou observed my servant Job, that there is none like to him on the earth, a man perfect and upright, one that feareth God and shunneth evil? And still he holds fast his integrity, though thou didst move me against him, to destroy him without cause. Satan answered Jehovah, and said, Skin for skin, and all that a man hath will he give for his life. But, stretch forth now thy hand and touch his bone and his flesh, if he will not announce thee, to thy face. And Jehovah said to Satan, Lo, he is in thy hand, only, spare his life. And Satan went out from the presence of Jehovah, and smote Job with grievous ulcers, from the sole of his foot to his crown. And he took a potsherd to scrape himself therewith, as he sat among the ashes. Then said his wife to him, Dost thou still hold fast thy integrity? Bless God, and die. And he said to her, 
Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaks. The good shall we receive from God, and shall we not receive the evil? In all this, Job sinned not with his lips. Now three friends of Job heard of all this evil that had come upon him. And they came each from his place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildod the Shuhite, and Zophar the Nomathite, for they had concerted together, to go and mourn with him, and comfort him. They raised their eyes afar off, and knew him not, and they wept aloud, and rent each one his garment, and strowed dust upon their heads toward heaven. And they sat down with him upon the earth, seven days and seven nights, and none spoke a word to him, for they saw that the affliction was very great. Chapter 3 Afterward, Job opened his mouth, and cursed his day. And Job answered, and said, Perish the day, wherein I was born, and the night, which said, A man-child is conceived. That day, let it be darkness, let not God from above seek for it, nor light shine forth upon it. Let darkness and death shade reclaim it, let clouds rest upon it, let darkenings of the day affright it. That night, thick darkness seize upon it. Let it not rejoice among the days of the year, nor come into the number of the months. Lo, let that night be barren, and no sound of joy enter therein. Let them that curse days, curse it, they that are skilled to rouse up the Leviathan. Let the stars of its twilight be dark, let it wait for light, and there be none, neither let it behold the eyelids of the morning. Because it did not shut the doors of the womb that bore me, and hide sorrow from my eyes. Wherefore did I not die from the womb, come forth from the womb, and expire? Why were the knees ready for me, and why the breasts, that I might suck? For now, I had lain down and should be at rest, I had slept, then would there be repose for me, with kings and counselors of the earth, who have built themselves ruins or with princes, who had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or like a hidden untimely birth, I should not be, as infants that never see light. There, the wicked cease from troubling, and there, the weary are at rest. The prisoners all are at ease, they hear not the taskmaster's voice. Small and great, both are there, and the servant is free from his master. Wherefore gives he light to the wretched, and life to the sorrowful in heart, who long for death, and it comes not, and search for it more than for hidden treasures, who are joyful, even to exulting, are glad, when they find the grave, to our man, whose way is hidden, and God hedgeth about him. For with my food, comes my sighing, and my moans are poured forth as water. For I feared evil, and it has overtaken me, and that which I dreaded, is come upon me. I was not at ease, nor was I secure, nor was I at rest, yet trouble came. Chapter 4. Then answered Eliphaz the Temanite, and said, Should one venture a word to thee, wilt thou be offended? But who can forbear speaking? Lo, thou hast admonished many, and hast strengthened the feeble hands. Thy words have confirmed the faltering, and the sinking knees thou hast made strong. But now, it is come to thee and thou faintest, it touches thee, and thou art confounded. Is not thy fear thy confidence? Thy hope, it is the uprightness of thy ways. Remember now, who that was guiltless has perished. And where were the righteous cut off? As I have seen, they that plough iniquity, and that sow mischief, reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger are they consumed. The lion's cry, and the voice of the roaring lion, and the teeth of the young lions, are broken. The strong lion perishes for lack of prey, and the lioness whelps are scattered. Now a word was stealthily brought to me, and my ear caught the whisper thereof. In thoughts from visions of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before me, the hair of my flesh rose up. It stood still, but I could not discern its form, an image was before my eyes, there was silence, and I heard a voice, Shall man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his Maker? Lo, he trusteth not in his servants, and to his angels he imputeth folly. Much more, they who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed like the moth. From morning to evening they are destroyed, so that, unheeded, they perish forever. Is not their excellency taken away with them? They die, and without wisdom. Chapter 5. Call now, is there any that will answer thee, and unto whom, of the holy, wilt thou turn? For grief slayeth the foolish, 
and envy killeth the simple. I have myself seen the wicked taking root, but soon, I cursed his habitation. His children are far from safety, they are oppressed in the gate, and there is no deliverer. Whose harvest the hungry shall devour, and take it, even out from the thorns, and the snare is gaping for their substance. For evil goes not forth from the dust, nor does trouble sprout up from the ground, for man is born to trouble, even as sparks fly upward. But I, to God would I seek, and unto God commit my cause. Who doeth great things, and unsearchable, things wonderful, without number. Who giveth rain on the face of the earth, and sendeth water on the face of the fields. He sets the humble on high, and the morning are raised to prosperity. He breaks up the devices of the crafty, that their hands shall not do the thing purposed. He ensnares the wise in their craftiness, and the counsel of the cunning is made hasty, by day, they meet darkness, and grope at noonday, as in the night. So he rescues the victim from their mouth, and the needy from the hand of the strong. Thus there is hope to the weak, and iniquity shuts her mouth. Lo, happy is the man whom God correcteth, therefore, spurn not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he woundeth, and bindeth up, he smiteth, and his hands make whole. In six troubles, he will deliver thee, yea in seven, there shall no evil befall thee. In famine, he will free thee from death, and in war, from the power of the sword. From the scourge of the tongue thou shalt be hidden, and shalt not be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and at famine thou shalt laugh, and of the beasts of the earth thou needst not be afraid. For with the stones of the field shalt thou be in league, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. So shalt thou know, that thy tent is in peace, and shalt visit thy pastures, and miss nothing. And thou shalt know, that numerous is thy seed, and thy offspring as the green herb of the earth. Thou shalt come to the grave in hoary age, as the sheaf is gathered in, in its season. Lo this, we have searched it out, so it is, hear it, and know thou, for thyself. Chapter 6 Then answered Job, and said, O oh, that my grief could be fully weighed, and all my calamity be laid in the balances. For now, it would be heavier than the sand of the sea, for this cause, my words have been rash. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, whose poison drinketh up my spirit, the terrors of God array themselves against me. Does the wild as bray, by the fresh grass, or lows the ox, at his fodder? Can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt, or is there any relish in the white of an egg? My soul refuses to touch. They are as food which I loathe. Oh that my request might come, that God would grant my longing, and that it would please God to destroy me, that he would let loose his hand, and cut me off for it should still be my solace, yea I would exult, in pain that spares not, that I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength, that I should hope, and what is my end, that I should be yet patient? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh of brass? Is not my help within me gone, and recovery driven away from me? Kindness, from his friend, is due to the despairing, ready to forsake the fear of the Almighty. My brethren are deceitful, like the brook, as the channel of brooks that pass away, that become turbid, from ice, the snow hides itself in them. At the time they are poured off, they fail, when it is hot, they are consumed from their place. The caravans, along their way, turn aside, they go up into the wastes, and perish. The caravans of Tema looked, the companies of Sheba hoped for them, they were ashamed that they had trusted, they came thither, and were confounded. For now, ye are become nothing, ye see a terror, and are dismayed. Have I said, give to me, or, bestow of your wealth for my sake, or, deliver me from an enemy's hand, and from the hand of the violence set me free. Teach ye me, and I will keep silence, and make me know wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words! But what does your upbraiding prove? Do ye intend to sense your words, when the words of the despairing are as wind? ye would even cast lots for the orphan, and dig a pit for your friend? And now, consent to look upon me, for I will not speak falsely to your face. Return I pray, let there be no wrong, yea return, I yet have a righteous cause. Is there wrong in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern what is perverse? Chapter 7 Has not man a term of warfare on the earth, and are not his days as the days of a hireling? 
as the servant pants for the shadow, and as the hireling longs for his wages, so I am allotted months of wretchedness, and wearisome nights are appointed me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise, and the night be gone? And I am wearied with tossings, till the morning. My flesh is clothed with rottenness, and clods of earth, my skin closes up, and breaks out afresh. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and consume away, without hope. Remember, that my life is a breath, my eye shall not again see good. The eye of him that seeth me, shall behold me no more, thine eyes will seek me, but I shall not be. The cloud consumes away, and is gone, so he that goes down to the underworld, shall not come up. He shall not return again to his house, and his place shall know him no more. As for me, I will not restrain my mouth, I will speak, in the anguish of my spirit, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I a sea, or a monster of the deep, that thou shouldst set a watch over me? When I say, my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall lighten my complaint, then thou scarest me with dreams, and terrifiest me by visions. So that my soul chooseth strangling, death, rather than my bones. I waste away, I shall not always live, cease from me, for my days are a vapour. What is man, that thou shouldst magnify him, and set thy thoughts upon him, that thou shouldst visit him every morning, shouldst, every moment, try him. How long wilt thou not look away from me, nor let me alone, till I can swallow my spittle? If I sin, what do I unto thee, thou observer of men? Wherefore hast thou made me thy mark, that I should become a burden to myself? And why wilt thou not pardon my transgression, and remit my iniquity? For soon, I shall lie down in the dust, and thou wilt seek me, but I shall not be. Chapter 8. Then answered Bildod, the Shuhite, and said, How long wilt thou speak these things, and the words of thy mouth be a strong wind? Will God pervert right, or will the Almighty pervert justice? Though thy sons have sinned against him, and he hath given them into the power of their transgression, if thou thyself wouldst seek God, and make supplication to the Almighty, if thou wert pure and upright, surely even now, he would awake for thee, and make thy righteous dwelling secure. Then, though thy beginning be small, thy end shall be exceeding great. For inquire, I pray, of the former generation, and note what their fathers have searched out. For we are of yesterday, and know nothing, and our days upon earth are a shadow. Will not they instruct thee, and tell thee, and utter words from their heart, does the paper rush shoot up, except in the marsh? Will the marsh grass grow without water? While yet in its greenness, and they cut it not, it drieth up, sooner than any herb. So are the ways of all who forget God, the hope of the impure shall perish. For his confidence shall be cut off, and his trust, it is a spider's web. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not abide, he shall lay hold on it, but it shall not stand. He, in the face of the sun, is green, and his sprouts shoot forth over his garden. Over a stone heap are his roots entwined, he seeth the habitation of stones. When he shall be destroyed from his place, it shall deny him, I have not seen thee. Lo, that is the joy of his way, and from the dust shall others sprout up. Lo, God will not spurn the upright, nor take hold of the hand of the wicked. While he fills thy mouth with laughter, and thy lips with rejoicing, they that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, but the habitation of the wicked, it comes to naught. Chapter 9 Then answered Job, and said, Of a truth, I know that it is so, for how can man be just with God? If he should desire to contend with him, he could not answer him, for one of a thousand. Wise in heart, and strong in power, who withstands him, and is secure? He that removeth mountains, ere they are aware, who overturneth them in his anger. He that makes the earth to tremble from its place, and the pillars thereof are shaken. He that bids the sun, and it shineth not, and sealeth up the stars, he spread out the heavens, alone, and treads upon the heights of the sea. He made the bear, Orion, and the Pleiades, and the secret chambers of the south. He doeth great things, beyond searching out, and wonders, without number. Lo, he goes by me, but I see him not, he passes along, but I do not perceive him. Lo, he seizes the prey, who shall hinder him? Who will say to him, What doest thou? God will not turn away his anger, proud helpers bow beneath it. Should I then answer him choose out my words against him? Whom, 
Though I be righteous, I would not answer, I would make supplication to my judge. If I called, and he answered me, I would not believe that he listened to my voice. For he dashes me in pieces with a tempest, and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not suffer me to recover my breath, but fills me with bitter plagues. If it be of might, lo he is the strong. And if of right, who will appoint me a time? Though I were righteous, my own mouth would condemn me, if I were perfect, he would show me perverse. Though perfect, I should take no thought for myself, nor should I value my life. It is all the same, therefore I say, he consumes the righteous and the wicked. When the scourge shall suddenly destroy, he mocks at the distress of the innocent. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, the face of its judges he veils, if not, who then is it? My days are swifter than a runner, they are fled, and have seen no good. They have passed by like the reed skiffs, as the eagle darts upon its prey. If I say, I will forget my complaining, I will change my aspect and be joyous, then I shudder at all my woes, I know thou wilt not declare me innocent. I, I am accounted guilty, why then should I weary myself in vain? Though I wash myself in snow water, and cleanse my hands with lye, then, thou wilt plunge me into the pit, and my clothes would abhor me. For he is not man, like me, that I should answer him, that we should enter into judgment together. There is no arbiter between us, that might lay his hand upon us both. Let him turn away his rod from me, that the dread of him may not overawe me, I will speak, and will not be afraid of him, for not so am I, in myself. Chapter 10 My soul is weary of my life, I will give free course to my complaint, I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, Do not hold me guilty, show me, wherefore thou contendest with me. Does it seem good to thee, that thou shouldst oppress, shouldst contemn the work of thy hands, and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Hast thou eyes of flesh, or seest thou as man seeth? Are thy days as man's days, or are thy years as the days of a man? That thou shouldst seek after my iniquity, and shouldst search for my sin, though thou knowest I am not wicked, and none can deliver from thy hand. Thy hands have fashioned me, and made me, in every part, and yet thou dost destroy me. Remember now, that thou hast formed me, as with clay, and wilt thou bring me to dust again. Didst thou not make me flow as milk, and thicken like the curd, clothe me with skin and flesh, with bones and sinews interweave me. Life and favor thou hast granted me, and thy providence has preserved my spirit. Yet these things thou didst hide in thy heart, I know that this was in thy mind. If I sin, thou observest me, and wilt not absolve me from my guilt. If I am wicked, woe unto me. And if righteous, I may not lift my head, filled with shame, and the sight of my misery. If it lift itself up, Thou dost hunt me like the lion, and show again thy wondrous power upon me. Thou renewest thy witnesses against me, and increasest thy displeasure towards me, with host succeeding host against me. Why then didst thou bring me forth from the womb? I should have died, and no I would have seen me. I should be, as if I had not been, should have been born from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Let him forbear. Let him withdraw from me, that I may rejoice a little while, before I shall go, and not return, to the land of darkness and of death's shade, a land of gloom like the thick darkness, of death's shade, without order, and the light is as thick darkness. Chapter 11 Then answered Zophar, the Nomothite, and said, Shall the multitude of words not be answered? Or shall a man of talk be accounted right? Shall thy boastings put men to silence, that thou mayst mock, and none make thee ashamed, and say, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thy sight. But, would that God would speak, and open his lips against thee, and would show thee the secrets of wisdom how manifold is understanding, then shalt thou know, that God remembers not all thy guilt against thee. Canst thou find out the deep things of God, or find out the Almighty, to perfection? It is high as heaven, what canst thou do? Deeper than the underworld, what canst thou know? longer than the earth, in its measure, and broader than the sea. If he pass by, and shall apprehend, and call an assembly, who will answer him? For he, he knows evil men, and sees iniquity, when he seems not to regard it. But vain man is void of understanding, a foal of the wild ass, is man from his birth. And thou, if thou direct thy heart, 
and spread forth thy hands, unto him, if iniquity is in thy hand, put it far away, and let not wrong abide in thy dwellings, surely, then shalt thou lift thy face without spot, and be steadfast, and shalt not fear. For thou shalt forget sorrow, as waters passed away, shalt thou remember it. And brighter than noonday, shall life arise, the darkness shall become as the morning. Then wilt thou trust, because there is hope, yea, thou wilt search, and lie down without fear. Thou shalt repose, and none make thee afraid, yea, many shall make their court to thee. But the eyes of the wicked shall waste away, refuge vanishes from them, and their hope, it is the breathing out of life. Chapter 12 Then Job answered and said, Of a truth, ye are the people, and with you, wisdom will die. I also have understanding, as well as you, I am not inferior to you, and who has not such things as these. I am become one, that is a mockery to his friends, who has called upon God, and he answered him, A mockery is the just and the upright. There is scorn for misfortune, in the thought of the secure, ready for those who waver in their steps. Peaceful are the tents of the spoilers, and secure are they that provoke God, he into whose hand God bringeth. But ask now the beasts, and they will teach thee, and the birds of heaven, and they will show thee. Or speak to the earth, and it will teach thee, and the fishes of the sea will tell it thee. Who knows not, by all these, that the hand of Jehovah does this, in whose hand is the breath of all living, and the spirit of all the flesh of man. Does not the ear try words, even as the palate tastes food for itself? Among the aged, is wisdom. And is length of days understanding. With him are wisdom and might, to him belong counsel and understanding. Lo, he casts down, and it shall not be built up, he shuts up a man, and he shall not be set free. Lo, he withholds the waters, and they dry away, and he sends them forth, and they lay waste the earth. With him are strength and counsel, the erring, and he that causes to err, are his. He leads counselors captive, and judges he makes fools. The girdle of kings he looses, and binds a cord upon their loins. Priests he leads captive, and the long established he overthrows. The trusted he deprives of speech, and takes away the wisdom of the aged. He pours contempt upon nobles, and looses the girdle of the strong. Deep things he reveals, out of the darkness, and the shadow of death he brings forth to light. He gives the nations growth, and he destroys them, he extends the bounds of nations, and he leads them away. The leaders of the people of the land he deprives of understanding, and makes them wander in a pathless waste. They grope in darkness, and there is no light, he makes them reel like a drunken man. Chapter 13 Lo, my eye has seen it all, my ear has heard, and perceived it. What ye know, I know also, I am not inferior to you. But I, to the Almighty will I speak, unto God I desire to make my plea. But ye, forgers of lies, watchers of vanities, are ye all. Would that ye would be altogether silent, for it would be your wisdom. Hear now my defense, and listen to the pleadings of my lips. Will ye for God, speak that which is wrong, and for him will ye utter deceit? Will ye regard his person, ye contend for God? Is it well, that he should search you out? Or, as a man is deceived, can ye deceive him? He will surely rebuke you, if ye secretly have regard for persons. Shall not his majesty make you afraid, and the dread of him fall upon you? Your wise sayings, they are maxims of ashes, your towers of defense are towers of clay. Keep silence before me, that I now may speak, and let come upon me what will. Why do I take my flesh in my teeth, and put my life in my hand? Behold, he will slay me, I may not hope, yet, in his presence, I will defend my ways. And he too will be my deliverance, for the impure shall not come before him. Hear attentively my speech, and that which I declare in your ears. Behold now, I have made ready my cause, I know that I am innocent. Who is he that can contend with me? For then would I be silent, and die. Only, two things do not thou unto me, then will I not hide myself from thee. Thy hand remove thou from upon me, and let not thy terror make me afraid, then call thou, and I will answer, or I will speak, and answer thou me. How many are my iniquities and sins? My transgression and my sin make known to me. Wherefore dost thou hide thy face, 
and regard me as thine enemy. A driven leaf wilt thou put in fear, and pursue the dry chaff. For thou writest bitter things against me, and makest me inherit the sins of my youth, and puttest my feet in the stocks, and watchest all my paths, thou settest a bound to the soles of my feet. And he, as rottenness, shall waste away, as a garment, which the moth consumes. Chapter 14 Man, of woman born, is a few days and full of trouble. Like a flower he goes forth, and is cut off, he fleeth as the shadow, and abideth not. And on such an one openest thou thine eyes, and me dost thou bring into judgment with thee? Who can show a clean thing, out of the unclean? There is not one. If his days are determined, if the number of his months is before thee, if thou hast set his bounds, that he cannot pass look away from him, that he may rest, so that he may enjoy, as a hireling, his day. For there is hope for the tree, if it be cut down, that it will flourish again, and that its sprout will not fail. Though its root become old in the earth, and its trunk die in the ground, through the scent of water it will bud, and put forth boughs like a sapling. But man dies, and wastes away, yea, man expires, and where is he? Waters fail from the pool, and the stream decays and dries up, so man lies down, and will not arise, till the heavens are no more, they will not awake, nor be roused from their sleep. O oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the underworld, wouldst conceal me till thy wrath is past, wouldst appoint me a time, and remember me. If a man die, will he live again? All the days of my warfare will I wait, until my change come. Thou wilt call, and I will answer thee, thou wilt yearn towards the work of thy hands. For now, thou numberest my steps, dost thou not watch for my sin? My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou suest up my iniquity but the mountain falling crumbles, and the rock is removed out of its place. Water wears out the stones, its floods sweep away the dust of the earth, so thou destroyest the hope of man. Thou assailest him continually, and he goes hence, thou changest his countenance, and sendest him away. His sons come to honour, and he knows it not, and they are brought low, but he heeds them not. Only, his flesh for itself shall have pain, and his soul for itself shall mourn. Chapter 15. Then answered Eliphaz the Temanite and said, Shall a wise man answer with windy knowledge, and fill his breast with the east wind, reproving, with speech that helps not, with words wherein is no profit? Yea, thou thyself dost cast off fear, and withholdest prayer before God. For thy mouth teaches thine iniquity, although thou choosest the tongue of the crafty. Thy mouth condemns thee, and not I, and thy lips testify against thee. Art thou the first man born, and before the hills wast thou brought forth? Hast thou listened, in the counsel of God, and reservest thou wisdom to thyself? What dost thou know, and we know it not, or understand, and we have not the same? The aged also, and the hoary-headed, is with us, older than thy father. Are the consolations of God too little for thee, and the word that gently deals with thee? Why does thy heart carry thee away? and why twinkle thine eyes, that against God, thou dost turn thy spirit, and utter words from thy mouth. What is man, that he should be pure, one born of woman, that he should be righteous? Lo, he trusteth not in his holy ones, and the heavens are not clean in his eyes. Much more, the abominable and polluted, man, that drinks in iniquity like water. I will show thee, listen thou to me, and that which I have seen I will declare, what the wise make known, and have not hidden, from their fathers. To whom alone the land was given, and no stranger passed among them. All the days of the wicked man, he is in pain, and the number of years that are laid up for the oppressor. Sounds of fear are in his ears, in peace, the destroyer comes upon him, he trusts not that he shall escape out of darkness, and he is destined for the sword. He wanders about for bread, where is it? He knows that a day of darkness is ready, at his hand. Trouble and distress make him afraid, overpower him, as a king ready for the battle. Because he stretched out his hand against God, and proudly set himself against the Almighty, ran upon him, with stiffened neck, with the thick bosses of his bucklers. Because he covered his face with his fatness, and gathered fat upon the loin, and abode in desolated cities, whose houses none inhabit, which are destined for stone heaps. He shall not be rich, nor shall his wealth endure nor shall their possessions spread abroad in the earth. 
He shall not escape out of darkness, a flame shall dry up his branches, and by the breath of his mouth shall he pass away. Let him not trust in evil, he is deceived, for evil shall be his reward. Before his time, it is fulfilled, and his palm is no longer green. He shall shake off like the vine his unripe grapes, and, like the olive, cast away his blossoms. For the household of the impure is desolate, and a fire devours the tents of bribery. They conceive mischief, and bring forth vanity, and their womb matures falsehood. Chapter 16 Then answered Job, and said, I have heard many such things, miserable comforters are ye all. Is there any end to words of wind? Or what emboldens thee, that thou shouldst answer? I also could speak as ye do, were your soul in place of mine, I could frame words against you, and could shake my head at you. I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the comfort of my lips should uphold. If I speak, my grief is not assuaged, and if I forbear, does it at all depart from me? But now, he hath wearied me out, thou hast made all my household desolate, and me hast thou seized, it is become a witness, and my leanness rises up against me, it bears witness, to my face. His anger rends, and it pursues me, he gnashes on me with his teeth, my enemy sharpeneth his eyes at me. They gape upon me with their mouth, with scorn, they smite me on the cheek, together they combine against me. God delivers me up to the unrighteous, and casts me into the hands of the wicked. I was at rest, and he shattered me, he laid hold of my neck, and dashed me in pieces, and set me up for his mark. His strong ones beset me round, he cleaves my reins, and does not spare, and pours out my gall upon the earth. He breaks me, with breach upon breach, he runs upon me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin, and have thrust my horn into the dust. My face is inflamed with weeping, and a death shade is on my eyelids, although no violence is in my hands, and my prayer is pure. Earth, cover not thou my blood, and let my cry have no resting place. Even now, behold my witness is in heaven, and my attester is on high. My mockers, are my friends, unto God my eye poureth tears, that he would do justice to a man with God, as a son of man to his fellow. For a few years will pass, and I shall go the way that I return not. Chapter 17 My breath is consumed, my days are extinct, the graves are my portion. Of a truth, mockeries beset me, and my eye must dwell on their provocation. Give a pledge, I pray thee, be thou my surety with thee, who is there, that will give his hand for mine. For their heart thou hast kept back from wisdom, therefore, thou wilt not exalt them. Whoso betrays friends for a prey, even the eyes of his children shall fail. And me has he set for the people's byword, I am become one to be spit upon in the face. My eye is bedimmed with grief, and my members, all of them, are as the shadow. The upright will be astonished at this, and the innocent will be roused against the impure. Yet will the righteous hold on his way, and he that is of clean hands will increase in strength. But as for them all, come on again I pray, for I find not a wise man among you. My days are past, my plans are broken off, the treasures of my heart. Night is joined to day, light is just before darkness. Lo, I wait my abode in the underworld, in the darkness have I spread my couch, I have called to corruption, my father art thou, to the worm, my mother and my sister. And where then is my hope? Yea my hope, who shall see it? It will go down to the bars of the underworld, as there is rest in the dust. Chapter 18 Then answered Bildod the Shuhite, and said, How long will ye hunt for words? Understand, and afterward let us speak. Wherefore are we accounted as the brute, are impure in your eyes, one that teareth himself in his rage? For thee, shall the earth be forsaken, and the rock remove out of its place. Yea, the light of the wicked shall go out, and the flame of his fire shall not shine. The light darkens in his tent, and his lamp above him goes out. His strong steps become straightened, and his own counsel casts him down. For he is driven into a net by his own feet, and he walks upon snares. The trap will seize by the heel, the snare will take fast hold of him, hidden is its cord in the earth, and its noose upon the pathway. On every side, terrors affright him, and pursue him, at his footsteps. His strength becomes famished, and destruction is ready, at his side. It devours the parts of his skin, 
his limbs the firstborn of death devours. He shall be torn from the security of his tent, and be led away to the king of terrors. There shall dwell in his tent they that are not his, brintstone shall be showered upon his habitation. Beneath, his roots shall dry up, and above, his branch shall be cut off. His memory perishes from earth, and he has no name on the face of the fields. He shall be thrust forth from light into darkness, and shall be driven from the habitable world. He has no offspring and no progeny among his people, and no survivor in his dwellings. They that come after are astonished at his day, and they that were before are terror-stricken. Such only are the habitations of the wicked, and such the place of him that knows not God. Chapter 19 Then answered Job, and said, How long will ye vex my soul, and break me in pieces with words? These ten times do ye reproach me, without shame, ye stun me. And even if, in truth, I have erred, my error abides with myself. If, indeed, against me ye will make your boast, then prove against me my reproach. Know now, that God has rested my cause, and his net he has cast around me. Lo, I cry out for wrong, and am not answered, I call aloud, and there is no justice. My way he has hedged up, that I cannot pass, and has put darkness over my paths. He has stripped me of my glory, and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side, and I perish, my hope he uproots like the tree. He makes his anger burn against me, as his enemies, does he regard me. Together come all his bands, they cast up their way to me, and encamp around my tent. My brethren he has removed far from me, and they that know me are wholly estranged from me. My kinsmen stand aloof, and my acquaintances have forgotten me. Sojourners in my house, even my maid servants, count me a stranger, I am become an alien in their eyes. I call to my servant, and he answers not, with my mouth, I entreat him. My breath is strange to my wife, I am offensive to the sons of the same womb. Yea, children spurn at me, if I would rise up, they speak against me. All my familiar friends abhor me, and they whom I love are turned against me. My bone cleaves to my skin and to my flesh, so that I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me, have pity on me, ye my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Why do ye pursue me as God, and are not satiated with my flesh? Oh that my words were written! Oh that they were inscribed in the book! That with an iron style, and lead, they were graven in the rock forever! But I, I know my Redeemer lives, and in after time will stand upon the earth, and after this my skin is destroyed, and without my flesh, shall I see God, whom I, for myself, shall see, and my eyes behold, and not another, when my reins are consumed within me. If ye say, How will we pursue him? And the root of the matter is found in me, be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath is a crime for the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Chapter 20. Then answered Zophar the Nomothite and said, For this, do my thoughts give answer to me, and because of my eager haste within me. My shameful chastisement must I hear, and the Spirit, from my understanding, will answer for me. Dost thou know this to have been from of old, since man was placed upon the earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the impure for a moment? Though his height mount up to the heavens, and his head reach to the clouds, according to his greatness, so shall he perish forever, they that saw him shall say, Where is he? As a dream shall he fly, and not be found, and be chased away, as a vision of the night. The eye that saw him shall see him no more, and his place shall no more behold him. His sons the weak shall oppress, and his hands shall make restitution of his wealth. His bones are full of his youth, but it shall lie down with him in the dust. Though evil be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he be sparing of it, and will not let it go, and hold it in his palate, his food is turned in his bowels, the gall of asps within him. He swallows down riches, but shall disgorge them, God will dispossess them from his belly. He shall suck in the poison of asps, the tongue of the adder will slay him. He shall not look on the water courses, the flowing streams of honey and milk. The fruit of toil he restores, and shall not devour, as his borrowed possession, and shall not rejoice in it. Because he oppressed, abandoned the weak, the houses he has plundered he shall not build up. Because he knew no rest in his bosom, of all his delights he shall save nothing. His greedy appetite nothing escaped, 
therefore his prosperity shall not endure. In the fullness of his superfluity, he shall be straightened, every hand of the wretched shall come upon him. His belly shall be filled. God shall cast on him the fury of his wrath, and shall rain his food upon him. If he flee from the iron weapon, the bow of brass shall strike him through. He plucks it out, it comes forth from his body, the gleaming weapon, from his gall. Terrors come upon him. All darkness is hoarded up for his treasures, a fire not blown shall consume them, it shall devour the remnant in his tent. Heaven shall reveal his iniquity, and earth stand up against him. The increase of his house shall depart, shall flow away, in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from God, and his appointed lot from the Mighty One. Chapter 21 Then answered Job, and said, Hear ye attentively my speech, and let your consolations be this. Suffer me, that I may speak, and after I have spoken, mock on. As for me, is my complaint to man. Or wherefore should I not be impatient? Look upon me, and be astonished, and lay the hand upon the mouth. For when I remember, I am dismayed, and trembling seizes my flesh. Wherefore do the wicked live, grow old, yea become mighty in power? Their seed with them is established in their sight, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are in peace, without fear, and no scourge of God is upon them. His cattle breed, and fail not, his kind bring forth, and miscarry not. They send out their little ones like the flock, and their children dance. They shout, with tabret and harp, and rejoice, to the sound of the pipe. In prosperity they spend their days, and in a moment, go down to the underworld. And they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty, that we should serve him? And what are we profited, if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. Far from me is the counsel of the wicked. How oft, does the lamp of the wicked go out, and their destruction come upon them, or he, in his anger, distribute sorrows? Or they are as stubble before the wind, and as chaff, which the whirlwind snatches away. Will God treasure up his iniquity for his sons? On him let him requite it, that he may know. Let his eyes see his destruction, and let him drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what is his concern in his house after him, when the number of his months is cut off? Shall one teach God knowledge, when it is he that judgeth the high? One dies in his full prosperity, he is wholly at ease, and secure. His sides are full of fat, and the marrow of his bones is moistened and another dies in bitterness of soul, and has not tasted good. Together they lie down in the dust, and the worm covers them. Lo, I know your devices, and the plots with which ye would oppress me. For ye say, Where is the house of the noble, and where the tent, in which the wicked have dwelt? Have ye not asked the wayfarers? And do ye not know their tokens? That the wicked is kept unto the day of destruction, they are brought on to the day of wrath. Who? to his face, will declare his way, and what he has done, who will requite him. And he, to the graves is he borne away, and watch is held over the tomb. Sweet to him are the clods of the valley, and all men will draw after him, as before him, without number. How then comfort ye me in vain, when in your answers there remains only deception? Chapter 22 Then answered Eliphaz the Temanite, and said, Can a man profit God? For it is himself the wise man prophets. Is it a pleasure to the Almighty, that thou shouldst be righteous, or again, that thou shouldst make thy ways perfect? Will he, for thy fear, rebuke thee, enter into judgment with thee? Is not thy wickedness great? And there is no end to thy iniquities. For thou hast taken a pledge of thy brother for naught, and stripped off the garments of the naked. The fainting thou gavest no water to drink, and from the hungry thou hast withholden bread. But the man of might, his was the land, and the honoured one, he dwelt therein. Widows thou hast sent empty away, and the arms of the orphans were broken. Therefore snares are round about thee, and fear suddenly confounds thee, or darkness, that thou canst not see, and the flood of waters covers thee. Is not God in the height of heaven? And behold the summit of the stars, how high! And thou sayest, how does God know? Can he judge through the thick cloud? Clouds are a covering to him, and he sees not, and he walks upon the vault of heaven. Wilt thou keep the old way, which wicked men have trodden? 
who were seized before the time, their foundation was poured away in a flood. Such as say unto God, Depart from us, and, what can the Almighty do to them? When he their houses had filled with good, but far from me is the counsel of the wicked. The righteous look on, and rejoice, and the innocent mock at them, truly, our adversary is cut off, and what is left to them a fire consumes. Now acquaint thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby shall good come upon thee. Take now the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, if thou remove wickedness far from thy dwellings. And cast to the dust the precious ore, and the gold of Ophir to the stones of the brooks, for the Almighty will be thy precious ores, and silver, sought with toil, for thee. For then shalt thou have delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. Thou wilt pray to him, and he will hear thee, and thou wilt perform thy vows. For thou wilt purpose a thing, and it shall stand, and light will shine upon thy ways. When they are cast down, thou shalt say, There is lifting up, and the meek-eyed he will save. He will deliver one that is not guiltless, and he shall be saved by the pureness of thy hands. Chapter 23 Then answered Job, and said, Even today, my complaint is frowardness. The hand upon me is heavier than my groaning. Oh that I knew how I might find him, might come even to his seat. I would array my cause before him, and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words he would answer me, and mark what he would say to me. Would he, with great power, contend with me? No. He surely would give heed to me. There, the upright might reason with him, and I should be delivered for ever from my judge. Lo, I go toward the east, but he is not there, and toward the west, but I perceive him not, toward the north where he worketh, but I behold him not, he covers himself in the south, and I see him not. But he knows the way that I take, when he tries me, I shall come forth as the gold. My foot has held fast to his step, his way have I kept, and not turned aside. The commandment of his lips, I put it not away, above my own law, I prized the words of his mouth. But he is the same, and who can turn him? And what his soul desires he will do. Truly, the purpose concerning me he will accomplish, and many such things are with him. Therefore do I tremble before him, I consider, and am afraid of him. And God makes my heart soft, and the Almighty confounds me. For I should not be dumb because of darkness, because thick darkness covers me. Chapter 24 Why, if times are not hidden from the Almighty, do they that know him not see his days? Landmarks they remove, flocks they seize upon, and feed. The orphans as they drive away, they take the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn aside the needy from the way, all the oppressed of the land are made to hide themselves low, as wild asses in the wilderness, they go forth to their toil, searching for the prey, the desert to him is bread for the children. In the field, they reap his fodder, and glean the vineyard of the wicked. Naked they pass the night, without clothing, and with no shelter in the cold. They are wet with the mountain storm, and cling to the rock for want of refuge. The orphan is torn from the breast, and on the sufferer is imposed a pledge. Naked they go about, without clothing, and hungry they bear the sheaves, prepare oil between their walls, tread the winepresses, and thirst. For anguish do the dying groan, and the soul of the wounded cries out, and God heeds not the prayer. There are they who rebel against light, they know not its ways, and they abide not in its paths. At the dawn, the murderer rises up, he slays the poor and needy, and by night, he will be as the thief. And the eye of the adulterer watches for the twilight, saying, No I shall see me. And puts a veil over the face. They break through houses in the darkness, by day they shut themselves up, they know not the light. For morning is death shade to them all, when one can discern, it is the terrors of death shade. Light is he on the face of the waters, accursed is the portion of such in the earth, he turns not into the way to fruitful fields. Drought and heat bear off the snow water, the underworld them that sin. The womb will forget him, when the worm feeds sweetly on him, he will no more be remembered, and iniquity will be broken, as the tree. He despoils the barren that beareth not, and shows no kindness to the widow. And he removes the strong by his might, he rises up, and no one is sure of life, he grants to them safety, and they are at rest, and his eyes are upon their ways. They rise high, a little while, 
and they are gone they are brought low, like all are they gathered, and are cut off like the topmost ears of corn. And if it be not so, who then will prove me false, and make my words of no effect? Chapter 25 Then answered Bildod the Shuhite, and said, Dominion and fear are with him, he maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number to his armies? And on whom does not his light arise? How then shall man be just with God, and how shall he be pure that is born of woman? Lo, even the moon, it shines not, and the stars are not pure in his eyes. How much less man, a grub, and the son of man, a worm? Chapter 26 Then answered Job, and said, How hast thou helped the powerless, succored the feeble arm? How hast thou counseled the unwise, and understanding thou hast taught abundantly? By whom hast thou uttered words, and whose breath has come forth from thee? The shades tremble, beneath the waters, and their inhabitants. Naked is the underworld before him, and destruction has no covering. He stretched out the north over empty space, he hanged the earth upon nothing. He binds up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He shuts up the face of the throne, he spreads upon it his cloud. A circling bound he drew on the face of the waters, unto the limit of light with darkness. The pillars of heaven tremble, and are astonished, at his rebuke. By his power he quells the sea, and by his wisdom he smites down pride. By his spirit are the heavens adorned, his hand formed the fleeing serpent. Lo, these are the borders of his ways, and what a whisper of a word is that we hear. But the thunder of his power who can comprehend. Chapter 27 And again Job took up his discourse, and said, As God liveth, who has taken away my right, and the Almighty, who has afflicted my soul, so long as my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, and my tongue shall not utter deceit. Far be it from me, that I should justify you, till I die, I will not put away my integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast, and will not let it go, my heart reproaches none of my days. Let my enemy be as the wicked, and he that rises up against me, as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the impure, though he despoil, when God shall take away his soul? Will God hear his cry, when distress shall come upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he call on God, at all times? I will teach you, concerning God's hand, what is with the Almighty I will not conceal. Lo, all ye yourselves have seen it, and why then speak ye what is utterly vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God, and the heritage of oppressors, which they receive from the Almighty. If his children multiply, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. In the pestilence shall they that remain to him be buried, and his widows shall not bewail. If he heap up silver, as the dust, and prepare raiment, as the clay, he may prepare, but the just shall put it on, and the silver shall the innocent divide. He builds, like the moth, his house, and as a booth, which the watchman makes. The rich man shall lie down, and shall not be gathered, he opens his eyes, and he is gone. Terrors, like the waters, shall overtake him, by night, the whirlwind snatches him away. The east wind carries him away, and he is gone, yea, it hurls him out of his place. For he shall cast at him, and will not spare, he would fain flee out of his hand. They clap their hands at him, and hiss him out of his place. Chapter 28 For there is a vein for the silver, and a place for the gold, which they refine. Iron is taken out of the dust, and stone is fused into copper. He puts an end to the darkness, and he searches out, to the very end, stones of thick darkness and of death shade. He drives a shaft away from man's abode, forgotten of the foot, they swing suspended, far from men. The earth, out of it goes forth bread, and under it, is destroyed as with fire. A place of sapphires are its stones, and it has clods of gold. The path, no bird of prey has known it, nor the falcons I glanced on it, nor proud beasts trodden it, nor roaring lion passed over it. Against the flinty rock he puts forth his hand, he overturns mountains, from the base. In the rocks he cleaves out rivers, and his eye sees every precious thing. He binds up streams, that they drip not, and the hidden he brings out to light. But wisdom, whence shall it be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knows not its price, 
nor is it found in the land of the living. The deep saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, it is not with me. Choice gold shall not be given in exchange for it, nor shall silver be weighed for its price. It cannot be weighed with gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx and sapphire. Gold and glass shall not be compared with it, nor vessels of fine gold be in exchange for it. Corals and crystal shall not be named, and the possession of wisdom is more than pearls. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not be compared with it, it shall not be weighed with pure gold. But wisdom, whence comes it? And where is the place of understanding? Since it is hidden from the eyes of all living, and covered from the fowls of heaven. Destruction and death say, with our ears have we heard the fame of it. God understands the way to it, and he knows the place of it. For he, to the ends of the earth he looks, and he sees under the whole heaven, to make the weight for the wind, and he meted out the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain, and a track for the thunder's flash, then he saw, and he declared it, he established it, yea, and searched it out. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Chapter 29 And again Job took up his discourse, and said, Oh that I were as in months past, as in days when God preserved me, when his lamp shined over my head, by his light I walked through darkness. As I was in my autumn days, when the favor of God was over my dwelling, while yet the Almighty was with me, my children were round about me, when my steps were bathed in milk, and the rock poured out by me streams of oil. When I went forth to the gate by the city, and placed my seat by the broad way, young men saw me, and hid themselves, and old men rose, and stood up. Princes refrained from words, and laid the hand upon their mouth. The voice of nobles was hushed, and their tongue cleaved to their palate. For the ear heard, and blessed me, and the eye saw, and witnessed for me. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the orphan, and him that had no helper. The blessing of the perishing came upon me, and the heart of the widow I made to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed itself with me, as a mantle and a turban, was my rectitude. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the needy, and the cause of him I knew not, I searched it out. And I broke the fangs of the wicked, and from his teeth I dashed the prey. And I said, Surely, I shall expire in my nest, and as the sand, shall I multiply days, my root is open to the waters, and the dew lies all night on my branch, my glory is fresh upon me, and my bow is renewed in my hand. To me they gave ear, and waited, they were silent for my counsel. After my word, they spoke not again, and my speech distilled upon them. Yea, they waited for me as for the rain, and opened wide their mouth, as for the latter rain. I smiled upon them, they believed it not, nor let the light of my countenance fall. Their way I chose, and sat as chief, and dwelt as king in the host, as one who comforts the morning. Chapter 30 But now, they mock at me, they who are inferior to me in years, whose fathers I disdained, to set with the dogs of my flock. Even the strength of their hands, what is it to me, they in whom old age is perishing? With want and with hunger famished. Who feed on the desert, the darkness of utter desolation, who pluck the salt plant by the bushes, and broom roots are their food. From the midst are they driven forth, they cry out against them, as against the thief, to dwell in gloomy gorges, in holes of the earth and rocks. They bray among the bushes, stretch themselves beneath the brambles. Sons of the foolish, yea, sons of infamy, they are beaten out of the land. And now, I am become their song, yea, I am become a byword for them. They abhor me, they stand aloof from me, they forbear not to spit before my face. Because he has let loose his rein and humbled me, they also cast off the bridle before me. On the right hand rises up a brood, my feet they thrust aside, they cast up against me their ways of destruction. They break up my path, they aid on my fall, there is no helper against them. As at a wide breach, they come in say roll on beneath the ruin. Terrors are turned against me, they chase away, like the wind, my princely state, and my prosperity has passed like the cloud. And now, my soul is poured out within me, the days of trouble have taken hold of me. By night, my bones are pierced and severed from me, and my gnaws take no rest. By sore violence, my covering is disfigured, like my inner garment it girds me round. 
He has cast me into the mire, and I am become like the dust and ashes. I cry unto thee, and thou answerest me not, I stand, and thou observest me. Thou art become cruel to me, with thy strong hand thou liest in wait for me. Thou dost lift me to the wind, and let me be borne away, and be dissolved in the tempest's crash. For I know thou wilt bring me to death, and to the house appointed for all the living. Yea, there is no prayer, when he stretches out the hand, nor, when he destroys, can they cry for help. Verily, I have wept for him whose lot is hard, and my soul has sorrowed for the needy. When I looked for good, then evil came, and I waited for light, but there came darkness. My bowels are made to boil, and have no rest, the days of trouble have overtaken me. I go blackened, but not with sun heat, I stand up in the congregation, I implore help. I am become a brother to jackals, and a companion to the ostrich brood. My skin blackens and falls from me, and my bones are dried up with heat. And my harp is turned to mourning, and my pipe to sounds of the weeping. Chapter 31 I made a covenant for my eyes, how then should I look upon a maid? For what is the portion God assigns from above, and the allotment of the Almighty, from on high? Is not destruction for the wicked, and calamity for the workers of iniquity? He, does he not see my ways, and number all my steps? If I have walked with falsehood, and my foot has hastened towards deceit, he will weigh me in scales of justice, yea, God will know my innocence. If my step has turned aside from the way, and my heart has gone after my eyes, and a stain has cleaved to my hands, let me sow, and another eat, and let my products be rooted up. If my heart has been enticed towards a woman, and I have lain in wait at my neighbor's door, let my wife grind for another, and let others lie with her. For that is wickedness, yea, that is a crime for the judges. For it is a fire, to destruction will it consume, and root out all my increase. If I spurn my servants and my handmaids right, in their controversy with me, then what shall I do, when God ariseth? And when he visiteth, what shall I answer him? Did not he, who made me in the womb, make him? And has not one formed us in the womb? If I keep back the weak from their desire, and make the eyes of the widow consume away, and eat my morsel alone, and the orphan hath not eaten of it. For from my youth, he grew up to me as to a father, and I have been her guide, from my mother's womb, if I see one perishing for want of clothes, and that the needy hath no covering, if his loins have not blessed me, and he has not been warmed from the fleece of my lambs, if I have shaken my hand at the orphan, because I saw my helper in the gate. Let my shoulder fall from its shoulder blade, and my forearm be broken from its bone. For to me, destruction from God is a terror, and before his majesty I am powerless. If I made gold my hope, and said to the fine gold, my trust. If I rejoiced, because my wealth was great, and because my hand hath gotten much, if I saw the sun, how it shined, and the moon walking in majesty, and my heart in secret was beguiled, and my hand my mouth hath kissed, this too were a crime to be judged, for I should have been false to God on high. If I rejoiced in my enemy's calamity, and triumphed when evil befell him. Yea, I suffered not my mouth to sin, to ask, with cursing, for his life, if the men of my tent have not said, where is one, that with his meat has not been filled. The stranger passed not the night without, my doors I open to the traveller, if I have covered like Adam my transgression, to hide my iniquity in my bosom, then let me dread the great assembly, and let the contempt of the tribes confound me, and let me hold my peace, nor go forth at the door. Oh that I had one who would hear me! Behold my sign, let the Almighty answer me, and my adversary write a charge. Verily, on my shoulder would I bear it, I would bind it on, as a crown for me. All my steps would I show him, as to a prince would I go near him. If my land cries out against me, and all its furrows weep, if I have eaten its fruits without pay, and made its tenants sigh out their breath, let thorns come forth, in place of wheat, and weeds, in place of barley. The words of Job are ended. Chapter 32 So these three men ceased from answering Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then was kindled the anger of Elihu son of Barachel the Buzite, of the family of Ram. Against Job was his anger kindled, because he accounted himself more just than God, and against his three friends was his anger kindled, because they had found no answer, and yet had condemned Job. But Elihu had delayed answering Job, because they were older than he. 
And Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of the three men, and his anger was kindled. Then answered Elihu, son of Barachel the Buzite, and said, Young am I in years, and ye are men of age, therefore I was afraid, and feared to show you my opinion. I said, Days should speak, and the multitude of years teach wisdom. But a spirit there is in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. Not the great are wise, nor do the old understand the right. Therefore I said, Hearken to me, I will show, I also, my opinion. Behold, I have waited for your words, have given ear to your reasonings, whilst ye searched out words. And unto you I gave heed, and lo, Job has none that confutes him, none of you that answers his words. That ye may not say, We have found out wisdom, that God may thrust him down, not man. For he has not directed words against me, nor with your words will I answer him. They were confounded, they answered no more, words were taken away from them. And I waited, because they spoke not, because they stood still, and answered no more. I, I also on my part will answer, I will show, I also, my opinion. For I am filled with words, the spirit within me constrains me. Behold, my breast is as wine that has no vent, like new bottles that are bursting. I will speak, and be relieved, I will open my lips, and will answer. Let me not regard the person of man, nor will I give flattery to a man. For I know not how to flatter, speedily would my maker take me away. Chapter 33 But hear now, O Job, my sayings and give ear to all my words. Lo now, I have opened my mouth, my tongue has spoken in my palate. My words, they are the integrity of my heart, and my lips speak knowledge purely. The Spirit of God made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. If thou art able, answer me, array thyself against me, take thy stand. Lo, I am of God as thou art, I too was taken from the clay. Lo, the dread of me will not make thee afraid, nor my burden be heavy upon thee. But thou hast said in my ears, and the sound of the words I heard, I am pure, without transgression, I am clean, and have no guilt. Lo, he devises quarrels against me he regards me as his enemy. He puts my feet in the stocks, he watches all my paths. Lo, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee, for God is greater than man. Wherefore dost thou contend with him? For of none of his affairs will he give account. For once does God speak, yea twice, when one heeds it not, in a dream, a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, in slumbers upon the bed. Then opens he the ear of men, and seals up their instruction, that man may put away a deed, and he may cover pride from man, may keep back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the dart. And he is chastened with pain upon his bed, and with a strife in his bones continually. And his spirit abhorreth bread, and his soul dainty food. His flesh wastes away from sight, and naked are his bones, that were not seen. And his soul comes nigh to the pit, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one out of a thousand, to show unto man his right way, then will he have mercy on him, and say, Deliver him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. His flesh becomes fresher than in childhood, he shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray to God, and he will accept him, and cause him to behold his face with joy, and will render back to man his righteousness. He will chant it before men, and say, I have sinned, and have perverted the right, and it was not requited me. He has redeemed my soul from going into the pit, and my life, that it may behold the light. Lo, all these things doth God, twice, yea thrice, with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, that he may be lightened with the light of life. Attend, O Job, hearken unto me, keep silence, that I may speak. If there are words, answer me, speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, do thou hearken unto me, keep silence, and I will teach thee wisdom. Chapter 34 And Elihu answered, and said, Hear ye wise men my words, and ye knowing ones give ear to me. For the ear trieth words, even as the palate tastes to eat. Let us examine for ourselves the right, let us know among us what is good. For Job has said, I am righteous, and God has taken away my right, against my right, shall I speak false. My arrow is fatal, without transgression. Who is a man like Job, that drinks in scoffing, like water, 
and walks in company with evildoers, and goes with wicked men. For he has said, A man is not profited, when he takes delight with God. Therefore, men and understanding, hearken to me, far from God be wickedness, and iniquity from the Almighty. For man's work will he requite to him, and let each one receive according to his way. Yea, of a truth, God will not do evil, nor will the Almighty pervert justice. Who has committed to him the earth, and who founded the whole habitable world? Should he set his thoughts upon him, withdraw to himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh would expire together, and man return to dust. If now there is understanding, hear thou this, give ear to the voice of my words. Can he indeed bear rule, that hateth right? Or wilt thou condemn the just, the mighty? Shall one say to a king, worthless, O wicked? Unto princes, to him who regards not the persons of princes, nor knows the rich more than the poor. For they are all the work of his hands. In a moment they die, at midnight, the people are smitten and pass away, and the mighty is removed without hand. For his eyes are on each one's ways, and he sees all his steps. There is no darkness, and no death shade, where the workers of iniquity can hide themselves. For not again does he set his thoughts upon one, that he may go to God in judgment, he breaks the mighty, without inquisition, and sets up others in their stead. He therefore knows their works, and in a night he overturns, and they are destroyed. As the wicked does he smite them, in the place where men look on, because they turned from after him, and regarded none of his ways, to bring up to him the cry of the weak, and that he may hear the cry of the afflicted. For he gives rest, and who shall condemn? He hides the face, and who shall behold it? Toward a nation, and toward a man, alike, from the ruling of corrupt men, from snares of the people. Surely, to God it should be said, I have borne it, I will not be perverse. Beyond what I see do thou teach me, if I have done evil, I will do it no more. Shall he according to thy mind requite it, that thou dost refuse, that thou thyself wilt choose and not I? Then what thou knowest speak. Men of understanding will say to me, even the wise man who listens to me, Job speaks without knowledge, and his words are without wisdom. My desire is, that Job may be tried to the end, for answers in the manner of evil men. For he adds rebellion to his sin, in the midst of us he mocks, and multiplies his words against God. Chapter 35 And Elihu answered it, and said, This dost thou regard as right, my righteousness, thou saidst, is more than God's. For thou sayest, What will it profit thee, what shall I gain more than by my sin? I will make answer to thee, and to thy friends, with thee. Look to the heavens, and see, and survey the skies, that are high above thee. If thou hast sinned, what dost thou against him? And are thy offences many, what dost thou unto him? If thou art righteous, what givest thou to him? Or what will he take from thy hand? For a man, like thyself, is thy wrong, and for a son of man, thy righteousness. For the multitude of oppressions they cry out, they cry for help, because of the arm of the mighty. But they say not, Where is God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? Who has taught us more than the beasts of the earth, and made us wiser than the birds of heaven? There cry they, and he answers not, because of the pride of evil men. Surely, vanity will God not hear, nor will the Almighty regard it. Much less when thou sayest, thou regardest him not. The cause is before him, and wait thou for him. But now, because his anger visits not, nor does he strictly mark the offence, therefore, Job fills his mouth with vanity, he multiplies words without knowledge. Chapter 36 And Elihu added and said, Wait for me a little, that I may show thee, for there are yet words for God. I will bring my knowledge from afar, and will render justice to my Maker. For verily, my words are not falsehood, one perfect in knowledge is before thee. Lo, God is mighty, but he contemns not, mighty in strength of understanding. He will not prosper the wicked, and the right of the suffering he will grant. His eyes he withholds not from the righteous, and with kings on the throne, he makes them sit forever, and they are exalted. And when, bound with chains, they are held in the bonds of affliction, then he shows to them their deed, and their transgressions, that they deal proudly, and opens their ears to the instruction, and commands that they turn from iniquity. 
If they hear and obey, their days they shall spend in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. But if they hear not, by the dart they perish, and expire without knowledge. So the impure in heart lay up wrath, they cry not for help when he binds them. Their breath shall expire in youth, and their life with the unclean. The sufferer he delivers in his affliction, and in distress he opens their ear. The two he lures from the jaws of the strait, to a broad place with no narrows beyond it, and thy table in peace, filled with fatness. But if thou art filled with the judgment of the wicked, judgment and justice will lay hold of thee. For beware, lest anger stir thee up against chastisement, and a great ransom shall not deliver thee. Will he value thy riches without stint, and all the might of wealth? Long not for that night, where the nations are gathered to the world below them. Take heed, turn not to iniquity, for this thou choosest rather than affliction. Lo, God shows himself great in his power, who is a teacher like to him. Who appoints to him his way. And who says, Thou hast done wrong. Remember, that thou magnify his work, which men do sing. All men gaze thereon, man beholds from afar. Lo, God is great, and we know him not, the number of his years, it is unsearchable. For he draws up the water drops, rain, of his vapor, they refine, with which the skies flow down, they distill on man abundantly. Yea, can one comprehend the bursting of the cloud, the crash of his pavilion? Lo, around him he spreads his light, and covers over with ocean depths. For therewith rules he nations, gives food in abundance. The palms of the hands he covers over with light, and gives it a command against the enemy. His thunder tells of him, to the herds, even of him who is on high. Chapter 37 Yea, at this my heart trembles, and starts up from its place. Hearken attentively to the roar of his voice, and the rumbling that goes forth from his mouth. He directs it under the whole heavens, and his light over the margins of the earth. After it a sound roareth, he thunders with his voice of majesty, nor lets them linger when his voice is heard. God thunders marvelously with his voice, great things does he, and we understand not. For to the snow he says, Be thou on the earth, and to the pouring rain, even the pouring of his mighty rains. The hand of every man he seals up, that all the men he has made may know, and beasts go into the lair, and in their dens abide. Out of the secret chamber comes the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God there is ice, and the breadth of the waters is straightened. Yea, with moisture he loads the thick cloud, he spreads his lightning cloud abroad, and it turns with his guidance every way, that they may do all he commands over the face of the habitable earth, whether as a scourge, for its land, or as a kindness he allots it. Give ear to this, O Job, stand and consider the wonders of God. Dost thou know, when God sets his thoughts upon them, and the light of his cloud blazes forth? Understandest thou the balancing of the clouds, the wonders of the perfect in knowledge? What time thy garments are hot, when he lulls the earth with the south wind, dost thou with him spread out the skies, firm as the molten mirror? Teach us what we shall say to him, for we cannot order it because of darkness. Shall it be told him, that I would speak? Or does one say a thing, that he may be swallowed up? For now, they look not on the light, when it is shining in the skies, and the wind has passed over and cleared them. Out of the north comes gold, with God there is terrible majesty. The Almighty, we cannot find him out, great in power and rectitude, and in fullness of justice, he will not oppress. Therefore do men fear him, he regards not any of the wise in heart. Chapter 38 Then Jehovah answered Job out of the storm, and he said, Who is this, that darkens counsel, by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, and I will demand of thee, and inform thou me. Where wast thou, when I founded the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who fixed its measures, that thou shouldst know? Or who stretched the line upon it? Whereon were its foundations sunken? Or who laid its cornerstone, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? And he shut up the sea with doors, when it burst forth, came out from the womb. When I made the cloud its garment, and the thick cloud its swathing band, and appointed it my bound, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shalt thou come, and no farther, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Hast thou, 
since thy days, commanded the morning, made the day spring to know its place, that it might take hold on the margins of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it. It is changed like the signet clay, and they stand forth as in gay apparel. And from the wicked is their light withheld, and the uplifted arm is broken. Hast thou come to the springs of the sea, and walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been opened to thee, and the gates of death, shade, dust thou behold? Hast thou surveyed even to the breadths of earth? Declare, if thou knowest it all, what is the way to where light dwells, and darkness, where is its abode? That thou shouldst bring it to its bounds, and that thou shouldst know the paths to its house. Thou knowest, for then wast thou born, and the number of thy years is great. Hast thou come to the treasuries of snow, and the treasuries of hail dost thou behold, which I have reserved for the time of distress, for the day of conflict and war? What is the way to where light is dispensed, and the east wind spreads over the earth? Who divided channels for the rain, and a track for the thunder's flash, to cause rain on a land without men, a wilderness wherein is no man, to satisfy the wilds and wastes, and cause the springing grass to grow? Is there a father to the rain? Or who has begotten the drops of dew? Out of whose womb came forth the ice? And the hoar frost of heaven, who has begotten it? As in stone are the waters hidden, and the face of the deep cleaves fast together. Dost thou bind the soft influences of the Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Dost thou lead forth the signs in their season, and the bear with her young, dost thou guide them? Knowest thou the ordinances of the heavens, or dost thou establish their dominion over earth? Dost thou lift thy voice to the clouds, and a flood of waters shall cover thee? Dost thou send forth lightnings, and they go, and say to thee, Here are we? Who put wisdom in the rains, or who gave to the spirit understanding? Who numbers the clouds by wisdom, and who inclines the bottles of the heavens, when dust is poured into a molten mass, and clods cleave fast together? Dost thou hunt the prey for the lioness, and the craving of the young lions dost thou fill, when they crouch down in the dens, lie in ambush in the cover? Who provides for the raven its prey, when its young ones cry unto God, wander without food? Chapter 39 Dost thou know the time the wild rock goats bear observe when the hinds are in labor? Dost thou number the months they fulfill, and know the time of their bringing forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young, they cast away their pains. Their young mature, grow up in the field, go forth, and return not to them. Who sent out the wild as free, and who loosed the wanderer's bands, whose house I made the desert, and the barren waste his abodes. He mocks at the clamor of the city, the driver's shouts he hears not. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. Will the wild ox be willing to serve thee, or abide at thy crib? Wilt thou bind the wild ox with his cord in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him because his strength is great, and commit to him thy labors? Wilt thou believe him, that he will bring home thy seed, and gather into thy threshing floor? The wing of the ostrich waves exulting, with pious pinion and plumage. Nay, she abandons her eggs to the earth, and warms them in the dust, and forgets that the foot may crush them, and the beast of the field trample them. She is hard towards her young, as not her own, in vain her pains, without fear. For God has made her forgetful of wisdom, and given her no share in understanding. When she lashes herself on high, she mocks at the horse and his rider. Dost thou give strength to the horse? Dost thou clothe his neck with terror? Dost thou make him bound like the locust? His proud snorting is terrible. They pour in the valley, and exult in strength, he goes forth to meet the weapon. He mocks at fear, and is not dismayed, and turns not back for the sword. The quiver rattles against him, the flaming spear and the dart. With trembling and rage he swallows the ground, he believes not that it is the trumpet's voice. With every trumpet he says, Aha! And sense from afar the battle, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. By thy understanding does the hawk mount upward, spread his wings toward the south. Or soars the eagle at thy command, and builds his nest on high. The rock he inhabits, and abides on the tooth of the rock and the stronghold. From thence he searches out food, his eyes behold afar off. His young ones suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is he. Chapter 40. 
And Jehovah answered Job, and said, Will the reprover contend with the Almighty? He that censures God, let him answer it. And Job answered Jehovah, and said, Behold, I am vile, what shall I answer thee? I lay my hand upon my mouth. I have spoken once, and will not answer, and twice, but I will not again. Then Jehovah answered Job out of the storm, and he said, Gird up now thy loins like a man, I will demand of thee, and inform thou me. Wilt thou even annul my right? Wilt thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? Or hast thou an arm like God, and canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with grandeur and majesty, and array thyself in splendor and beauty. Send out the floods of thy wrath, and behold all that is high, and abase it. Behold all that is high, and bring it low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, bind up their faces in darkness. Then I too will praise thee, that thy right hand can save thee. Behold now the river ox, which I have made with thee, he eateth grass like the herd. Behold now his strength in his loins, and his force in the sinews of his belly. He bends his tail like a cedar, the sinews of his thighs are knit together. His bones are pipes of brass, his bones are as bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God, he who made him gives his sword. For mountains yield him produce, and all beasts of the field play there. He lies down beneath the lotuses, in the cover of reeds, and marshes. Lotuses weave for him his shade, willows of the brook surround him. Lo the stream swells, he startles not, is fearless, though Jordan rush forth to his mouth. Before his eyes do they take him, pierce through the nose with snares. Chapter 41 Wilt thou draw out the crocodile with a hook, and press down his tongue with a cord? Wilt thou put a rush cord in his nose, and bore through his jaw with a hook? Will he make many supplications to thee, or will he speak soft things to thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird, and bind him for thy maidens? Will partners dig a pit for him, divide him among the merchants? Wilt thou fill his skin with darts, and his head with fish spears? Lay thy hand upon him. Of battle thou shalt think no more. Lo, his hope is belied, is he cast down even at the sight of him. None so fierce that he will rouse him up. Then who is he that will stand before me? Who has first given me, that I should repay? Under the whole heavens, it is mine. I will not pass his limbs in silence, and bruited strength, and beauty of his equipment. Who has uncovered the face of his garment? His double jaws, who enters in. The doors of his face who has opened. The circuits of his teeth are terrible. The strong shields are a pride, shut with a close seal. They join one upon another, and no breath can come between them. Each is attached to its fellow, they hold fast together, and cannot be sundered. With his sneezings shines a light, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. From his mouth go flames, and sparks of fire escape. From his nostrils goes forth smoke, like a kettle with kindled reeds. His breath enkindles coals, and flame goes forth from his mouth. In his neck abideth strength, and terror dances before him. The flakes of his flesh cleave fast, firm upon him, it is not shaken. His heart is firm as stone, yea, firm as the nether mill stone. At his rising up the mighty are afraid, they lose themselves for terror. If one assail him with the sword, it shall not hold, the spear, the dart, and the mail. Iron he accounts as straw, brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee, to him, sling stones are turned to chaff. Clubs are accounted as stubble, and he laughs at the shaking of the spear. Shard points are under him, he spreads a threshing sledge over the mire. He causes the deep to boil like the pot, he makes the sea like a pot of ointment. Behind him he makes a glistening path, one would think the deep hoar with age. On earth there is none that rules him, he is made without fear. He looks on all that is high, he, the king over all the sons of pride. Chapter 42 Then Job answered Jehovah, and said, I know that thou canst do all things, and from thee no purpose can be withheld. Who is this that obscures counsel without knowledge? I have therefore uttered what I understand not, things too hard for me, which I know not. Hear now, and I will speak, I will demand of thee, 
and inform thou me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Therefore do I abhor it, and repent in dust and ashes. Now after Jehovah had spoken these words to Job, Jehovah said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My anger is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends, because ye have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job. Now then, take ye seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up a burnt offering for you. And Job, my servant will pray for you. But him will I accept, that I visit not the folly upon you, for ye have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job. Then went Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildod the Shuhite, Zophar the Nomothite, and did as Jehovah had spoken to them, and Jehovah accepted Job. And Jehovah turned the captivity of Job, when he prayed for his friends. And Jehovah increased all that Job had, twofold. And there came to him all his brethren and all his sisters, and all who before had known him, and they ate bread with him in his house, and mourned with him, and comforted him for all the evil which Jehovah had brought upon him. And they gave him each a kesitor, and each a ring of gold. And Jehovah blessed the end of Job more than his beginning. And he had fourteen thousand sheep and goats, and six thousand camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and thousand sheasses. And he had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kezia, and the name of the third Keren Hapak. And there were found no women fair as the daughters of Job, in all the land, and their father gave them an inheritance among their brethren. And Job lived, after this, a hundred and forty years, and he saw his sons, and the sons of his sons, four generations. And Job died, old and full of days.